Masala chai is a drink that has a ton of different flavors and harmonious spices just packed into one drink. You might not think about it, but there's a lot of chemistry that goes into that process. Today you're going to be learning about the science of chai as well as how to tweak the flavor according to your tastes. Every spice has volatile oils, and these oils have a diversity of chemical compounds that give rise to flavor and aroma. They have two very important properties. Number one, their volatility means that they evaporate very easily. When we make our chai, our main objective is to extract as much flavor as we can out of those spices. And to achieve that objective, there's two things we're going to need to do. Buy your spices whole and fresh and grind them using a mortar and pestle, with the exception of ginger, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Avoid pre-ground. When spices are grinded, their volatile compounds are exposed to more surface area and will therefore evaporate at a faster rate and undergo chemical reactions. That's fine if you're adding freshly grinded spices to your food immediately, but over the course of several months that potency is severely reduced. Store your spices in a cool, dark place before you use them. The application of heat increases the volatility of the compounds, and for some spices, light can cause chemical reactions which further reduces the potency of the spice. Number two, spices tend to dissolve better in fats and oils rather than water. When you make chai, be sure to use whole milk. The high fat content in whole milk serves two very important functions. The first is that fat carries a lot of flavor, and the second is that because the fats and volatile oils are both nonpolar substances, they stick together better as opposed to mixing volatile oils with water. The flavor thus diffuses more effectively. Another consideration is that spice compounds typically fit into one of two chemical structures, and those are called terpenes and phenols. Terpenes tend to be especially volatile when compared to phenols. They generally have earthy, floral, citrusy, and cooling flavors. Phenols, on the other hand, have a more distinct, strong-tasting flavor. Their compounds tend to be spicy, warming, and sometimes pungent. Keep this in mind when adding your spices. Do you like chai that's dominated by cool, minty, cardamom flavors? Then consider adding terpene-rich spices like these towards the very end. Since these spices are more volatile, they're more likely to lose their flavor compounds the longer the chai cooks. Fresh ginger contains a mildly pungent compound called gingerol, and when ginger is dried and formed into powder, that gingerol gets converted to shogale, which is twice as pungent. If you like a stronger ginger flavor, then use ginger powder, otherwise use fresh ginger. To answer this question, I compared 20 different chai recipes and they shared one thing in common. They all used milk, sugar, water, black tea, and a blend of spices. The spice profiles, however, were much more varied. The top three most commonly used spices were featured in 90% of the recipes. Those were green cardamom, ginger, and cinnamon. Also featured in most recipes were cloves and black peppercorns in 80% of the recipes. Least frequently used were star anise, fennel, nutmeg, allspice, and mint. Some recipes called for toasting the spices prior to grinding. I consulted several books on the effect of toasting spices, but there was a lack of agreement on what toasting the spices actually achieved. Some say toasting spices will be beneficial in forming pyrazines, which make the spices taste nutty. Some say toasting spices before grinding will make them more flavorful. And then some say toasting the spices before grinding will mellow the flavor because more volatile oils will escape. One source even recommended freezing the spices for a day before grinding to reduce volatility and to maximize flavor. To test this idea, I brewed two batches of chai. In the first batch, I toasted the spices prior to grinding, and in the second batch, I chilled the spices for a day prior to grinding. My wife and I preferred the second batch, which was a little bit spicier. Regarding black tea, there are over 600 chemical compounds identified in its flavor and aroma. It's therefore important to steep that tea long enough to extract all of those flavor compounds out of the tea and to maximize flavor. There is, however, a trade-off. Typically when brewing tea, the lighter compounds like caffeine and phenols will diffuse first, followed by heavier compounds. The last compounds to be extracted from the tea are polyphenols, known as tannins, which tend to make tea bitter. Tannins, however, love to bind to proteins, much like those in milk. When tannins bind to milk rather than the proteins in our saliva, we are more able to avoid the bitter flavors. 